Welcome back. Let's catch you up on a few stories that should be on your radar today. It is time for Rapid Fire. Here to break down the headlines, Contessa Brewer, Bill Griffith, and Courtney Reagan. Welcome, everybody. Court, we're starting with you again, okay. talking yes. some Nordstrom. <laughs> uh, the share, I mean, it is remarkable. They're up about 15, 16% today. They had better than expected earnings, but they missed on revenue. It's on pace now for the best week in nearly 10 years, but again, context is uh, key here. So I think actually what's very key is that there's 27% short interest in this stock. Wow. Macy's short interest is only 13% by comparison. So you so think this very, is a short covering rally? I do, because yes, they beat on earnings, but it was kind of what we call like that poor quality beat. Like they had expense management and, and some of these benefits. Their net sales were down 5.1%, which was the lowest they've reported since the Great Recession. Whoa, mm -hmm. so it's actually accelerating to the downside. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it wasn't, it, it wasn't a good report. Like the shares, they popped immediately after huh. the bell on this. And I thought there's just no way. So I've talked to several analysts and they're like, look, there's really not a lot of great things here. They, they're expecting Nordstrom, this sort of inflection in the second half of the year. Hmm. The New York City flagship is going to open on October 24th. But a lot of the analyst community is a little skeptical uh, that they can turn this around. So the trend that we've seen the last week from these retail earnings still holds then. Uh, big box good department store not so good is that the idea <laughs> yeah pretty much After pretty much bj's yeah. i mean that was that one looked pretty good right yeah, that one looked pretty good too but again that's a wholesale club and there's a lot of value association with a wholesale club which is like a cost value is everything like right a now. sam's yeah. club right exactly well, so i sort of the, put that in the same and you had the right. cowan analyst who said hey maybe they need to consider the consumers who are now looking at the secondhand markets and they, they're used to having coupons. And so Nordstrom is, as a luxury retailer, maybe needs to rethink that. So they actually right. lowered the price target by $2 now to 30 bucks. That's right. So they you still know, have an Apple It's funny form. you say, I don't know if you guys saw, the journal did a whole thing over the weekend about reselling clothes, basically, yeah. and yeah. how hu huge of a market that's become. And it really, I have to I say, do it. open my eyes. And I, I now I get it. And I wonder, you know, when we talk about the real, real and some a lot of these, these luxury things that used to go through the Nordstrom channels, how much that's peeling people off. You do right. that? I do. Yeah, I recently. Do people clothes. know that that's Courtney Reagan that's selling a book? <laughs> what a premium that would bring. That's true. Uh, right? Yeah. Let's test yeah. the market court. <laughs> Got to put your name on it next time. All right, moving on. President Trump told reporters yesterday that Apple CEO Tim Cook is a great executive, quote, because he calls me and others don't. The two appear to share a pretty warm relationship. Cook was at uh, dinner in Bedminster uh, with Trump just last week in New Jersey, guys. The interesting thing to me about what the president said was he didn't just say, I appreciate that Tim calls me. He's it was like, why doesn't everybody else do this hmm. too? Don't you think this is making companies who invest in, as the president put it, um, the very expensive consultants rethink their strategy Maybe. if they know that the chosen one will pick up the phone? Right. I mean, if he's That's telling his words. you to give him a call, <laughs> why? And, and I understand there's pushback, especially Silicon Valley companies, big tech, the other employees hate Trump. I get it. But for Apple, it's not exactly like Tim Cook has gotten a bunch of blowback on this. No, uh, Tim Cook has said, I have heard him say this. He can call Donald Trump because Donald Trump answers the phone. He has tried to call President Xi in China, but he doesn't answer the phone. So it works both ways. Yeah. You know, uh, there might be CEOs who would figure that the president of the United States is not going to pick up the phone and want to talk to an individual CEO. Sure. But in fact, he does. We know that this is a president who keeps his own counsel and he is a good listener. We know that his opinions are based on the most recent uh, thought, you know, person right. that told him something. And, and if we didn't know before that he was available, and I totally take your point, who would have thought, oh, yeah, no, he'll definitely answer the call. But he right. also made some reference to, you know, every other company, they have the lobbyists call me. I think, what a waste of a call. Right. right. That's true. Directly. For this president, yes. Yeah. That being said, though, regardless of the president, and we know especially right now, this president can be quite controversial. And I do think that there is probably some calculus that companies need or want to do when they are considering following Tim Cook's lead. Should I be calling right. the president? Yes, it may help my company if I have a closer relationship with him so that I can explain to him how his policy decisions are impacting my business, but how will my consumers feel right. about that? Right, but don't you think Apple would be the perfect example of a company whose sure. employees might revolt or customers might revolt, but there's been no evidence of that. No. That's true. That's a good point. Yet. That's a good point. But if I, it keeps the tariffs down, no revolt. It, well, right. right. If it, it saves us $100 on the iPhone, right. no, I don't know. Uh, next up, let's talk about AMC. The movie theater chain is testing dynamic pricing, meaning it will 
now charge a premium for movies of the highest appeal and cheaper tickets for films in low demand. Rolling this out in 30 venues, including Boston, Columbus, uh, Indianapolis, and San Diego, thinking it'll put more butts in seats. So oh, I, I've already rolled this out. I mean, I think gas stations should do this now. <laughs> I think grocery stores should do this now. How about your, lo your local cleaners? I mean, you know, the, the rule in restaurants is you're not a success unless you can put butts in the seat on a Monday night, right? <laughs> but what you do you do? You, you, you do dynamic actually, pricing. If, if gasoline stations are dynamic pricing, then there would be a revolt in the Well, country. no, but I mean... It, it's you, essentially you, surge pricing. You it works tend for Uber. to fill up yep. more or often. It, it, it did so well, they had to then rename it, call it something else, and right. swear they'd stop doing yeah. it, you know? You, I mean, you tend to fill up more often idea. when you need it, not right. when the price goes down. So, uh, it, if, for example, in the Outer Banks, where we would vacation every year, suddenly the price would go up just before the weekend when everybody's going to be leaving town or arriving, and it's the lowest price on Monday. Huh. So why not do it on a regular basis But how do well? they decide the demand in advance? Do how they, do you know that? I for mean, the movie theater? Yes, for so the movie rotten, theater. Maybe Rotten Assuming Tomatoes Fandango. is a good indication. Yeah. yeah no, is, like that, is that what they're using? Like, well, well, this movie's going to be more popular, we're guessing, so we're going to charge you more for right. this one and than others. And can you others. imagine going can back? Can you imagine the, mo the, the, you know, the production companies going, whoa, 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 you can't determine that in advance. Like, our movie's about, really good. Like, if you're Disney and, they, and you go, okay, so AMC's going to charge you more to see The Lion King now or what have you. Uh, downside is you might lose a few people. Upside is if the, uh, we're still talking about an increased ticket. So I, it, I wonder about that trade. Well, and they're also talking about whether you wait a few weekends and right. then lower the prices. Yeah. But can you imagine putting up, say, the Avengers against b the book club, and and yeah. and and. The, the choice that you're going to have. Maybe you're all of a sudden going to get a lot of teenagers going to see the book club. I, I think, don't know. I think the book club would lose anyway, <laughs> no matter what the pricing but was. I would love to see this to the down. I might go if I and knew I, it was going to be super I don't even know what the book club is. Oh, you're missing out. Oh, you're missing out, <laughs> I think I saw the previews and I was like, uh-uh. Uh, finally, this might be the first credit card to come with the user manual. Speaking of <laughs> Apple, this new titanium card literally comes with guidelines on how to care and clean it. For example, Apple saying, wipe down the card with a soft yet microfiber cloth. I always love that one with the microfiber cloth. Sanitize only with, I don't even know how to say that, isopropyl alcohol, a staple in first aid kits, and avoid putting the card too close to denim or leather to prevent discoloration. Don't put it near your other credit cards either. This is a lot of maintenance. Like, no, <laughs> this is I'm ridiculous. Out. I'm done. I mean, this like, is not Jay Leno taking care of his, his car, rare yeah, cars. His you know, this yeah. is a credit card, everybody. <laughs> I, you know, it's ridiculous. Which you're not even really going to use. It's if, really in your digital If wallet. there's a problem with the credit card, then they should have fixed it ahead of time. They're putting the monkey on no, the customer's back right now. it's not a problem. They're telling right you, this is so special. Exactly. You are oh, so oh, That's what I think. No. I it's totally like agree. Taking, it's like taking care of a pair of the, your first $1,000 shoes, which I might How do. well did you take care of your first $1,000 thousand shoes? Uh... <laughs> Well, just, they were $1,000 shoes. They were not a frickin' credit card. I'm just saying that that's what they want. They want this to feel elite, luxurious, yeah. superior. Mm -hmm. This card is going to make you feel like not you're better than all your friends. We're already at peak Apple card. <laughs> And it hasn't even launched and yet. And it hasn't even launched. Okay. When you guys I'm get one, out. I want to know if you uh, how you care for I it. I just had to play devil's advocate on that conversation. And I just want to No, I fully believe okay, that. I believed you. everything you said. <laughs> you don't think that's what they're trying and to do it's here? True, I totally think that's what Also, I'd like to be with them and say, I'm out. Okay. <laughs> Count me out. <laughs> if you saw the state of my wallet, you'd understand why. <laughs> I do. It's like the George Costanza wallet. Yeah. It's so bad. It's yeah. just stuffed and... Deactivation right away with this car. I'm then. impressed you can get into the building. That's true. <laughs> anyway, Contessa Brewer, Bill Griffith, Courtney Reagan, thank you all very much.